Welcome back everyone, and in today's video, I'm going to show you exactly how to install Linux Mint. Now, for most other distros of Linux, this method works just as well. But I'm going to show you how to install Linux Mint today. Now, if you are fully committed to switching over to Linux, and have moved all of your precious data over to an external hard drive that you can then reinstall on the new drive. And if you have at least a 16 gigabyte thumb drive ready, then jump to this timestamp to get going. Otherwise, stick around for other instructions and things to be aware of. So to start, a few things we need to cover before we get started. If you are moving forward with this, that means that you have fully committed to switching over to Linux. Because once you wipe your disk and install Linux Mint, there is no going back. Unless, however, you, you'd like to dual boot on your main desktop, or you can swap out your SSD and your laptop each time you want to go back to Windows. If you're still timid, but willing to at least give it a try, I would recommend using a separate drive. That way you can still go back to Windows if you wish. I would recommend at least a 500 gig SSD that you can pick up at your local Best Buy or Micro Center if you have one near. For your main desktop, using a separate SSD to boot Linux Mint at least allows you to jump back and forth if you want. However, on a laptop, I would recommend just going for it, but definitely back up your data, your files, your pictures, your videos, and everything else on a separate external hard drive like this, so that you can then move it over to Linux once everything is set up. One final thing, if you have tons of bookmarks and saved passwords to your browser, you can save those as a file and bring those over to Linux and then put them on your browser over there because the browser on Linux won't remember you unless you bring over those bookmarks and passwords. So things you will need, an external hard drive for all your personal data, an extra SSD of 500 gigabytes or more, and at least a 16 gigabyte thumb drive for your OS install. Once you have all that, we can get started. Go ahead and plug the thumb drive into one of your USB ports on your computer. Then pull up your browser of choice and go to linuxmint.com. This is where you can download the ISO for the installation. Now, to be clear, Linux has three different versions of the OS. They have Cinnamon, which is the most feature-rich version. Then they have Mate, or Mate, which is lighter and less featured and more stable. Then they have XFCE, which is even lighter and even less featured than Mate. Which one should you choose? It really comes down to what you use your computer for. Do you need the latest and greatest features with ultimate customization? then Cinnamon is the way to go. If you aren't worried about fancy features and customization, but want stability and reliability, then go with Mate. I use Mate on my entertainment PC in my living room because it's faster when loading up my browser and has more room for all my retro games. Honestly, it doesn't matter. Just pick one and then click on download. You'll then be brought to this screen. Just scroll down and select which mirror you want to pull from. It really just depends on where you live. Since I'm in the great US of A, I'm going to select one of those from the US. While it's downloading, we need to grab one more piece of software, because we need to flash the ISO to the flash drive so it can install. Open up a new tab on your browser and type in Belina Etcher. Click on this link, then download the program and install it. Once it's done installing, go ahead and open it. Then you'll be looking at the main screen for the flashing process. Simply click on the first button, then select the file you want to flash. It'll prompt you to find the Linux Mint file you just downloaded. Then click the select target, which is the thumb drive we plugged in earlier. Select that and then hit flash. Now just sit back and wait and let it do its thing. Once it's finished, you'll be the proud owner of a flash drive with Linux Mint on it. See, I knew you could do it. Now, take that flash drive and plug it into the computer you are wanting to upload Linux to. Next, we need to get into the BIOS of the computer. Here's where it can get a little tricky. If your computer is already running, hold down the shift button and then restart your computer while holding shift the entire time. After a moment or two, you should see this screen. Go down and click on troubleshoot, then advanced options, and then UEFI firmware settings. It should prompt you to restart. Your computer will then restart and boot straight into the BIOS. Now, depending on what system you have, whether you have a Dell, an HP, a Lenovo, or whatever, 
Your BIOS may look a little different than this, but they all function the same way. The main thing you're looking for is secure boot. We need to make sure that that is turned off. So scroll through your BIOS menu and look for it. It is most likely in the boot menu. So scroll down and make sure it is turned off or disabled. Otherwise your computer will continuously boot into Windows. Then we need to make sure that the flash drive is first in the boot order. Once you've got that, just hit F10, save your changes, and then your computer will reboot into the flash drive. You'll then be shown this screen. Just hit enter and your computer should boot into the live environment. You may see some impressive technical text on the screen, which is simply just Linux running through its boot up checks and balances. Once it's finished, it may take a moment or two, so don't freak out if it just sits there. It should jump right into the live environment. This is the main desktop of Linux Mint. If you poke around real quick, you'll notice it's quite similar to Windows in its layout and design style. That's really the whole point, is to give Windows users a much easier transition over to Linux, rather than having something completely foreign and different that scares them away. Once you've finished poking around, go ahead and click on the Install Linux icon at the top left of the screen. This will begin the installation process. First, it'll ask your language, your keyboard layout, English, US will work for most. Then make sure you install your multimedia codecs. Then it'll ask you how you want to install the OS. Do you want to erase the current disk and install the new OS? or do you want to partition it out? If this is a brand new drive, just choose the first option and move on. This will wipe your drive if you haven't backed up your stuff like I suggested before. Then choose the disk you want it installed on and your location, then your name and password for the system. Once you're done with that, the OS will install. It may take some time depending on how old or new your hardware is. Once that's finished, your system will restart and prompt you to remove the flash drive and then press enter. Do that and you'll boot right into your brand new Linux Mint desktop. You'll also be greeted with the welcome screen, which will help you get started with all the programs and software you will need to install to get up and running. However, it would be wise to update everything before you go on and start installing things. So. As you go through the welcome screen, it will prompt you to open up the update manager. Do that and just start updating. Don't worry about the local mirror banner. Just get to updating. Once you've done some updates, your system will most likely need to restart a few times as you get everything updated. Once that's finished, check with the driver manager. This will make sure all your drivers for the hardware are installed and up to date. Once that's all squared away, the OS is yours to do with as you please. This may or may not happen to you, but if it does, the icons may not show up on your desktop. If they don't, it's a very simple fix. Just go to your start menu and type in desktop, then go over and click on icons, then click on the icons to show on the main display, then scroll down and select the icons you want to see on your home screen. Just a couple of things that are different from Linux rather than Windows. In Linux, if you need a piece of software, you want to go to the software manager first to check to see if it's available. If not, then you can go and find it on the web but always check with the software manager first before going to your browser to download and install software. I know that's a standard practice for Windows, but in Linux, this is the way to do it. You're free to use any browser you wish, but Mint does come with Firefox. If you already use it, then you're all set. If you want to use Brave like I and many others do, then simply go to your software manager, search it up and install it. It's just that easy. You can do that for any software that Linux supports, like LibreOffice, which is the open source alternative to Microsoft Office. It does all the same stuff and is completely free. 
Now, if you did back up your files and data on an external hard drive, now is a good time to bring all that back over and put it back on your machine. Just plug in the external drive to, into your laptop and pull your files into the proper folders. Once you've done that, you are basically all set. Enjoy your new OS and welcome to the Linux community. If you have any issues at all, please let me know and I'll see what I can do to help you. But honestly, this process is pretty simple.